All right guys, so let me walk you through a little bit how I went ahead and approached this project. So where we left off on the last video was, we got the bags installed, we got all the air lines kind of routed, and we basically got those in. I wanted to kind of pick it up from there. So I went ahead for, let's review uh, sort of the line routing uh, for the air lines. So I use quarter inch air lines. Make sure you get DOT. From the front airbags, I went ahead and ran it up through the front of the car, through the engine bay, around the fender edges, right there at the fender where the fender bolt's on, and kind of went around the firewall, and then did some grommets through the firewall, and the right bag and the left bag went separately through the firewall and I used a 3 8 drill bit for the grommet opening, and that was perfect for a quarter inch sort of hose to go through. So from there, of course, I went ahead and used some plastic looming uh, around the hose, so it's, it's got that all the way through it, and I even put some extra uh, heat tubing around that I had laying around, uh, around the sort of the frame and stuff like that. So I think it's super well taken care of. I got it zip tied and clipped everywhere that I need to, to route it through. And so that's kind of the front. Then in the front, the lines kind of come through the firewall, as I mentioned. And then it's just a short trip with my setup because again, I'm using the manual valves at the, and the valves are, they're basically the switches, right? Uh, so they're right under the dash. So from there, it went from the firewall through the dash and out underneath the vents there in the front. So that's the basic routing for the front lines. Okay. Now, the rear lines, what I did, I really think it's cool and I really love how the rear turned out because they are they don't spend a lot of time under the car at all. If you saw my last video, and make sure you check that out uh, because I show you exactly how to do that. I basically ran the lines from the rear airbags right up through where the shock mounts are. So it's a very short line under the car. Again, I used those, those grommets, three inch hole, Right, I did it right beside basically where the shock stud comes through. And so on both sides of the rear seat, right where the shock mounts are, you got your lines coming up, okay? Now those have to go to the dash, right? Because again, I'm doing the manual valve. Now, if you guys are doing the electronic valves uh, or anything like that, all that typically goes with the compressor and the tank, which will typically be in the rear, all that will go to those valve blocks, if you will. On well, my setup, I wanted to keep it super simple and it's all, all goes through the, the dash there. So the control panel is really where it goes. So I just ran that very simply from the back seat area down the driver's side sill plate and then up through the side kick panel and then through the dash. So very easy, very safe. There's nothing under the car. It's all interior ran. So I really like that, which is really cool. That's the rear lines routing. All right, now I've got all the lines routed through the dash, okay? The next thing is, is that control panel. I had two gauges and each gauge has two valves on it basically. Okay, so it has two needles, one for the left and one for the right, okay? So I've got a front gauge, which has a left and right needle, 
and I've got a rear gauge, which has a left and right needle. So very nice, and then I've got four valves uh, connected to that, okay? And I'll show you how I sort of uh, ran the hoses and connected all that on that, on, that, on that valve, on the manual valve system and the gauge system there. So let's talk about that. So the final line that I routed through uh, the car is the source, okay? That's coming from the tank and it's gonna be the source for all the bags. And so I just ran an extra line from the rear of the car to the dash. And I followed the basically most of the same route as I did uh, the rear bags, right? Obviously, the tank is gonna be in the rear spare tire area. So it just had to kind of come through the plastics there and then snake through the back seat area on through the sill plate area. Pretty simple stuff. You guys have ran this stuff before, you know, you know uh, how to route this stuff. So just the main thing is keep it away from like your back seat if it's hinged or, you know, you don't want this thing to have any moving parts against it at all. So make sure you keep it super protective and anything that can rub or chafe against it, just keep that in mind. It's an airline, okay? You wanna protect it. So I would just say that's my number one pro tip. I'm not a pro, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, so that, that would be my suggestion there. Just use your common sense in routing these lines is all. Uh, but those, that's what I did. Now the front, you know, obviously coming through the engine bay, the engine bay is heat, but these are DOT approved. They're super thick walled. And that along with the wire loom that I have, I've been periodically checking and these things are totally cool. So again, just keep it away from any moving parts, things like that. Get it up through the engine bay the best you can and then come back. Okay, right under the vent thing. And it's got four valves. So one valve per bag. And so I'm gonna have, there's two needles here. There's a red and a green, red and a green. So this will be the front gauge, this will be the rear gauge, and we'll be able to control each one of them. So that's kind of cool. Okay, let's talk about those paddle valves, okay? We've got two gauges and paddle valves, and that's really my whole control. That's a manual control system for my air suspension setup, okay? Now, the way you work those is, is I took that one source, I only have one source coming from the tank, that quarter inch line. For each one of the valves, you're gonna have a source and you're gonna have basically the exhaust or basically the pressure going to the valve, okay? Now on the source, I daisy chain that to all the valves going to the tank, okay? So we've got one line going to a single valve and then it's daisy chained with the T fitting off of that valve on the other three valves. So all of them now have a single source of air that are coming to it. Now the valves actually control sending that source air to whatever valve, whatever bag you select, right? So when you hit one valve, it's letting air pass through that valve to the exhaust part of that switch, okay? Now, so in, with your valves, you only have an in with your source and out, which is going to your bag, okay? Now on the out part of that valve, what I did was I put a T on that and ran that to the gauge, okay? So for every single output going to the bag, I put a T and ran that to the gauge. So that's essentially how I figured out how to do this whole thing with four valves and two gauges, but the two gauges uh, have two needles. So they, they, there's a source for every valve. See there guys, tucking it in a little bit better. You can tell from this angle here. But you can see these are way sticking way out. So I'm trying to 
I don't know if I can heat these. You just gotta be really careful. So I'm really just trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. So kind of tedious, but it's gonna be under my vent. So I kind of want to keep everything as compact as possible is the key. All right, guys. So you can see here, this one's a little off because this one's a little short, this leg here going into the valve. The rest of them turned out pretty good. This is gonna be basically the sore or the uh, going to the bags here. So they're teed to the gauge and also to the valve on each valve. And then all you have to do really is figure out a way to daisy chain all the sources together. Unless you run a couple different sources, then this becomes easier. Uh, so there you go. So that's pretty much it. I kind of got it a little tightened and I had to fab up this bracket here because the holes were literally like right here. Like how in the hell are you going to screw anything in here with a gauge? You can't get anything in there. So I kind of extended it out on each end. So I made that bracket and this thing's ready to go in. All right, guys. Went ahead and got them all connected into the T on the back of the gauge. So now we just have to mount this up and uh, we should be good with this part put all this back together and the manual gauge system is pretty much ready all right guys it's all mounted got it all set just been playing around with it pressures aren't really where they need to be but i figured i'd just kind of start putting some air in it from again my garage compressor so this is it here, kind of the management system. And uh, it's kind of nice as you, you know, kind of air up or air down, whichever you one you want to do. And uh, it works pretty nice. So, man, I'm loving it so far. The ride has been incredible. I mean, it's like you're riding on air. <laughs> so the ride has been super nice, man. I've been really enjoying it. Anyway, this is it, guys. Pretty good. Uh, you know, I kind of wish the thing had a little bit of, you know, side thing or whatever there, but for the most part, you can't really see it. So I think it's hidden pretty well as all the lines are going through there. So I'm pretty happy with it. So that's pretty much the lines routing it and the valves and the manual valve system here with the gauge. All right, just kind of prepping the tank here. I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these elbows push lock with, uh, I think this is like a MPT uh, thread on each end. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that. Let's take a 916 wrench and uh, we'll get this tight. And did the other side here. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and plug this 8th inch uh, one up. So I've got this plug here. So we'll put some Teflon tape on that and go ahead and plug that for now. I've got it. Once I get my compressor, I'll figure out where all these goes. But and then when I put the Teflon tape on, I try to not put it on the first couple threads. And then I just kind of come all the way up. It's really because the way these threads work, they kind of get wider as the piece, uh, so they tend to tighten up. So they actually won't go to this last thread here near the, near the uh, head of it. But uh, anyway, we just go ahead and tighten this up nice and snug, and this one will be set. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. 7 16th wrench for the eighth inch plug. I like, I like to feel it almost stop there. Okay. Tank is now prepped. So we got this particular tank. It's a small two and a half ride tech tank. And uh, it's got two on this one. Nice little bracket. And then one on that yeah. one. And then I have a pretty good idea where I want to put this. I think this will actually fit in the spare tire area. So... I think I'm gonna try to mount it there. I don't really wanna, you know, have the 
hardwood and show set up and all that i'd rather just kind of conceal all this and, and keep it hidden for this car all right guys all right so we went ahead we use this cutter here you definitely want to do that and it's pretty easy you just kind of take the line and the cutter has a little blade here you just lay it in here and get it to where you want it squeeze it and pops it right off nice clean cut Super easy, don't use uh, side cutters or anything like that. A razor blade you might be able to get away with if you make sure it's nice and square. But that's the key, is you're gonna wanna make sure that that's a real nice square flush in. So I went ahead, I've got the check valve on, make sure you put that on the right way. Here's my Schrader valve, again, that's a push lock. Again, I'm gonna use my shop vac for now, my shop compressor for now, until I get my compressor in. So it's just a way for me to, right now I'm using this straight to the paddle valves. So right, so we'll go ahead and add the tank. Uh, it's sort of an iterative build here, guys. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'll go ahead, add the line here, push it onto there. And then we've got a way to fill the tank with our shock compressor. And like I said, I can't do it while I'm on the road yet, but uh, at least uh, we're kind of getting there. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and, like I said, let's go ahead. I'm gonna push that in there. Click. There you go. Nice and tight. Then we'll go ahead and push it in this one right here. Doesn't really matter which port. Okay, so that's kind of the setup there, guys. That's gonna be the source. So I, again, I can take my shop compressor, just pump it up. And I've just been using this sort of deal here. And then uh, my compressor, that's how I've been filling it. Now the other side will go to uh, the other, we'll go ahead and pop that in and we should be all set. I won't mount this because like I said, I, I wanna get the compressor, see how all this works, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit in the spare tire area. At least this will, so we'll see. Okay, it's a little bit of a mess here, but I haven't mounted anything, just trying to test the system out. And then I think I can mount everything in here, the relay, the pump, the pump, the tank, and so I just kind of tested the system and it's working great. I got the pressure valve here. So when it gets below like 130, it'll go ahead, trigger the relay and the pump will come on. So it keeps it above 130, 135, something like that. And uh, max is out at 150, it'll, the switch will actually turn it off. So pretty cool stuff. Now I just got to figure out how to fit all that in here, which I think I have a plan for that. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, now let's get to the tank and the compressor and the, all that good stuff, right? So my idea was now for this car, I didn't want to have that whole show thing. People go crazy. They have some elaborate setup in the back, uh, trunk setup and hatch setup and all that. For me, I didn't want any of that. I just wanted to basically hide it. <laughs> so that's what I did. I used the spare tire area and I pulled that panel off 
and I went ahead and mounted the tank right on top of the wheel well and I mounted the compressor right there near the tail light at the back of the wheel well. Having that compressor mounted in there, having the tank mounted in there is pretty, pretty convenient. All of my air management systems in one location, super simple. And the way that that's sort of set up is you have your tank and on my tank, I only had uh, three ports on it one on each end that was basically for my quarter inches. I have one coming from the compressor to the tank and then I have one line which is that source line I was talking about earlier going to the valves. That's it, okay? But I got a third port on the tank to put in, that's an eighth inch NPT port and that one is actually going to be where the pressure switch is mounted, okay? So you put that pressure switch in there and when the tank gets, the idea is when the tank gets below 130 or 135, I forget which one it is, it'll trigger the relay that I have. And when the ignition's on, uh, it'll trigger the relay and then the tank, the compressor will run and fill it back up to 150. So the idea is it never really gets below 135, right? And what I found is with that setup, if I air all four down, and this is only a two and a half gallon tank. Again, I wanted to keep it kind of compact so I could get it all back in the, in the rear well, um, in, in the spare tire area. So just think about that. Some guys go five gallon, you get way more capacity, uh, takes more compressor. They typically do a dual compressor with that. But for me, single compressor, single two and a half tank, it's a pretty simple system. And uh, that compressor takes a few minutes to fill that back up. But for me that I found, if I dump all four all the way down and then I raise them up, uh, once I get almost up all the way to where I wanna be in my cruising height, then the compressor will kick on and that'll run, um, I don't know, two to three minutes, something like that. So not bad. Whole compressor to tank uh, set up with that pressure valve and a relay, that's really it for, for that part of the system, okay? Mm -hmm. I think we're going to mount the pump right in this area here in the spare tire area right and this area here seems like a pretty good spot there so we'll go ahead and see if we can mount it there and uh, see what happens so i'm gonna go ahead and drill some pilot holes All right guys, went ahead, got the pump in, pretty easy. I picked a panel that's obviously not on the outer panel here. This looks like there's some space here. So that looks like it worked out okay. Got a bottom bolt there, two self tapping, and the rubber grommets to really help it isolate the vibration. So there we go. So the compressor is on. All right, so the next step, we wanna go ahead and get this tank. Of course, I've got it all mocked up here when I was testing it, but I think I wanna put it right up in here. So I think it's gonna fit there. I may have to make a custom bracket to maybe come off of this lip here. Uh, I'm not sure how the mounting's gonna work for it, but we'll see. You definitely don't want to have a screw coming through this because obviously that's where your wheel well is you have your tire so if you want maybe you could do like a carriage bolt come up through this way perhaps but I'm gonna try to feed it off of one of these lips here and build a bracket and we'll see how that goes all right so pulling that peg there and I'll figure out how to put a bushing and bolt that on that way this thing has got nowhere to go and then this one I'm gonna bolt it to this bracket right here and we should be all set. So that's the plan. We'll see if it works. All right, guys, here we go. It's all mounted up. Got that bracket bolted up. Fit nice. 
should clear that panel, I hope, <laughs> where this other one will go on. And I went ahead, drilled here, and then I used the spare tire sort of peg. I drilled in the middle of this bracket, and that gives it sort of something to ride on as well. So I think this is really secure. It's not going anywhere, super tight, and uh, I feel pretty good with this. This is gonna be awesome. So I'll go ahead and hook this up. All right, so go ahead and remove this panel. Okay guys, let me take you in here. So, went ahead, got the tank mounted. Now, what I did here, is I'll take you in a little bit. I've got this bracket that I welded on. You see it there. And I welded this red bracket on. Of course, I painted it after I welded it on. And that just comes right off of this lip that's already exists on your wheel well. So I just turned the tank this way and then mounted it up on there. You can see I've got one port here, and then the two ports are on the other side. I'll take you down there. And what's cool is I went ahead, I got the compressor mounted. Again, that's right here. Now that thing does have a vibration, and even with the rubber bushings, it's still, you know, it's still doing this a little bit, but I think, you know, it's pretty good from the from outside. I'm pretty happy with it anyway. And so went ahead and got that done. And then I took, this is the one I had in the car when I had originally thought I was gonna do two valves, which I was gonna tee the front and tee the rear together, but that was a bad idea. So I had this, so I had this laying around and I went ahead and teed this into the fittings for the tank. So now I've got a pressure gauge. You can see there, the black needle is what she's reading now. So overall, the last thing I did I went ahead and mounted the relay here. That's going to your pressure switch, which is basically right there. So one wire goes to the ignition on, and then the other wire that goes to the relay, and that triggers the relay, right? So that's the way that's set up. And then I've got some heavy gauge, I think 10 gauge wire ran for the positive and negative going to the battery. So, well, the negative just going to the chassis, but you know what I mean. So that's basically the setup, guys. What do you think? Man, that's pretty sweet. It's all hidden. It's all nicely. You would never know I've got an airbag system, really, just looking at the, at the car, except when it's dumped. You know, you're like, yeah, that's airbags. But so far, I'm super happy with this setup, guys. And I hope you this you know gives you enough information as you decide to do it. You know, for me, uh, so far, I love it. You know how often I change things, though? <laughs> so, uh, you know, give me some time and uh, do a full review here. I want to put it through its performance paces as well. Uh, but I think I'm going to need some double adjustable shocks for that. And so I can really dial in the compression and the rebound stroke on it. But yeah, man, I'm super happy with it, guys. And uh, we'll go ahead, put this panel back on. But man, this is such a sweet setup. So thanks guys. Okay. So that's it guys. I mean, it's uh, a pretty simple system. Now, some guys go crazy. They, they have the, the Bluetooth, they can set the pressures on their phone and that's the electronic valves, right? Valve block that typically comes with the higher end um, uh, self-management systems. 
and some guys actually do uh, level sensors as well. The idea is it's got a, a basically a mechanical level sensor and whenever it gets one side is lower than the other it'll automatically <laughs> it'll automatically air air up right so, so it'll actually manage the height system for you which is really cool I don't need any of that <laughs> I don't need any of that fancy smancy stuff <laughs> so keep it simple man and for me that was really it I wanted to keep this system super simple and uh, I've got a bunch of spare parts so if anything ever happens you know I should be able to fix it pretty easy so not a big deal the most of the times people have problems with these and you hear horror stories it's the installation of them they didn't do a good job installing these right um, or they didn't maintain it or periodically check it there's some maintenance that goes along with this so I would say in general you know you should have a pretty trouble free air management system you know if you just install it right and then make sure you take care of the system and, and check it the only other thing that I need to get is a water trap because the compressors uh, generate moisture and so you can get it's probably a bigger deer in the deal in the north for here it'll never breeze in Tampa but it's probably not good to get moisture in the bags and that sort of thing I guess maybe it rusts or there's metal I don't know so it's probably a good idea to, to get that water so I am gonna get that and install it. it's pretty easy um, between the compressor and the tank one more thing I forgot to mention I do have a one-way valve that's going from the compressor to the tank the idea is the tank won't bleed off back into the compressor so I did buy one of that so um, so anyway that's pretty much the setup guys I'm really super happy with this I've been playing with it all for a couple weeks here um, this video spans a couple months so hopefully I'll put this thing all together in a nice way for you guys to understand what it would take to to do the second part of this installation so i hope this is helpful guys